the pipe where it's collapsed down. Um, and that was in the vicinity of the um, service station there. It's, it's sort of roughly where their car park is. Um, that may or may not have been the point of entry for the fuel to go in the sewer. I wouldn't have thought it would be the only entry point, but it's something that uh, needs addressing. So they're going to do a proposal for us to do um, some renewal works, uh, relining most likely in that area to address those issues. Um, the CCTV also allowed us to actually locate that uh, manhole, which you couldn't find before, which is in the road itself. So when we do those renewal works, we'll have to uncover that manhole uh, to do the relining. That manhole's in the middle of Ke Kelly Street, so it's in the lane of traffic. Um, so, yeah, lucky it's not the New England Highway anymore. <laughs> uh, that, that'll be when we get that proposal, we'll work through that. I don't have a, a, a time frame, for that, um, but that's sort of just an update. On that issue, the village reticulation reservoir. So we're getting the first concept designs for the village reticulation have come in and we'll have something a bit more progressed with some cost estimates uh, in the very near future. We don't have it for this meeting yet, but in the very near future. Um, then community consultation will follow getting those designs. Um, that'll come through the, the committee first. I'll just say that. Um, the cost estimates a, uh, a proposal uh, from us how we may connect, how we may arrange those uh, costs. Um, that'll sort of come through the committee. Correct me if I'm wrong, Nick. Uh, yeah, can I just add to that, Phil? Yep. So we all remember it was 12 months ago we put through a Series, a, a plan of how we'd go about developing those designs. And we had a number of zones in each uh, village for the Wingen, Parkville and Blanford. Um, some of those villages had three zones. Some of them had five or six different zones about the different areas that we wanted to try and service. That's what's informed that concept. And when we come back, we'll be, we might have the price for all the uh, the whole village, but we also have prices for different parts of those zones. Yeah. Yeah, so those conversations um, through the committee, I think we talked to Nick about maybe even doing like a workshop process um, to take those cost estimates and those conceptual designs, work out, you know, a, a suitable way to attack that sort of how much or how little we want to do and how we might price that and how we might deliver, deliver that. And then that's what we will then take um, through a community consultation process following that. Um, the tender documents for the reservoir, when I wrote this, the aim was to put that out on the 11th of May, which was yesterday. I'm not that's sure that. preferred. There's a couple of um, clarifications on the tender docs and that's planning to go out either late this week or early next week. Okay. Um, the aim is to have that constructed by the end. That's probably not quite right. That's probably uh, January 2021 is the target completion date for construction there um, for the reservoir. Uh, and here's a, just an update in terms of our sort of business as usual work, because a lot of the time I don't um, sort of go into that. So our crews have still been working uh, very steadily despite the COVID-19 situation. So They've done a major water main replacement along St. Auburn Street. They're halfway through that. Um, they're doing a section along Liverpool Street um, where they're redoing that intersection. So essentially what happened is the section they had to replace for the intersection, they've just taken that another 100 or so metres up to get rid of all the old uh, cast pipe and join up with a new section which Darricon laid under the bypass. Um, after they do that job, they'll move on and replace the section up in Barton Street, which you may be aware we've had a number of breaks there, which is sort of, uh, we've had to reprioritise that. Um, and then they'll be sort of back to St Auburn Street um, to finish that job. That sort of goes to the end of this financial year in any case. So, um, yeah, the guys are still very active, very busy um, in delivering those works. Uh, if we go to the attachment, 
Um, have a bit of a flick through there. I won't go through each item, but if there's any items there that you would like to ask any questions of, please let me know. Uh, Phil, the um, point 11, the, uh, this cashless sewerage system, uh, this seems to have been continuing. Are we any closer to getting a starting date, really? A firm starting date or, or just, you know? We're, uh, we're closer to being able to tell you the date, I suppose is the best way to put it. Um, yeah, the, we are at the point where we need to, I guess, um, come up with that concrete plan to deliver that project. Um, we have started conversations with Public Works in assisting us in that process um, because Cardinal have completed their works. Um, yeah, I don't have much further update at, for this meeting, unfortunately, Ron, but I can uh, provide a, a much more comprehensive update on that very, very soon. It is something that we're currently sort of teasing out how to deliver that right now. Yeah, okay, thank you for that. Yes, it just, just seems to have gone on, but yes. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, Councillor Bedgwood, our Mayor. You're on mute. Yep. Was that a question? Uh, could, could you repeat that, please? You seem to be still on mute. Just wanted to see if you're awake, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> uh, with, the, with the Upper Hutter Water Scoping Study, it says it's been sent to Infrastructure New South Wales for finalisation. Yes. I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering why. And uh, secondly, do we have any idea when council will see that uh, that study? Yeah, sure. Um, the finalisation is just so that they can basically tick their box and say, yes, you've completed the scope and we can give you some money. Um, so that's more to do with the funding deed side of things. Um, the study is more or less complete. There's other items that Hunter H2O is still working on, which I can give you an update now. Um, the um, drone survey was done last Friday. Um, they're also working through doing that site layout. So there'll be a site layout for what a future water treatment plant will look like on the site. We'll get that first. Um, and then we'll also have the, the 3D sort of concept of, of how that'll look um, so that we can take that to the public. But the study itself is more or less finished. That's something that the committee, um, that councillors can look at now, that uh, we, we can share that around now. I, I, yeah. Yep. Right, thank you. Uh, do we have any other further questions? Yes, I have one, Mr. Chair. Um, yes. In relation to the sewer investigations, what does STP stand for? I missed that, I came in late, just so uh, I'm not... That stands for sewage treatment plan. Oh, okay, great, thank you. And um, in also with respect to the manhole in Kelly Street, do we know when we might have to dig that up? Is that soon or what, what will happen there? I don't have a date on that, but it will be, you know, as, as soon as practical. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's no, I guess to clarify on that, it's something we did those investigations to check what the condition of our sewer was in that area following that incident. Um, but there's nothing there that, that you would necessarily say is urgent works. It's just something that we will get to given the, yeah. the circumstance. Yeah. Okay. So just as soon as we can get to it. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any further questions or comments on uh, uh, SC 5.1? Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Move it. Move it, Lorna. Second, uh, Councillor Collison. I'll still say verbally all those in favour because everybody's not on the screen. Uh, if you have any objections, then perhaps raise your hand. There being no objections, we, we, motion is passed. the recommendation is passed. Can we turn over to page 10, please? ISC 5.2. Uh, works program infrastructure services. Um, Sam, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
So we've got um, our road works out on Kelly's Gully, uh, still progressing. Um, we're back out there this week uh, to start up and finalise that um, third stage. Um, it will be expected to be finished by the end of the, or before the end of the financial year. Um, Willow Tree, the upgrade out, out there. Um, so we just completed the um, test holes out there. Uh, the materials will get um, tested now. Uh, the expected um, time to get those results is about a, a fortnight. And then based on those results, um, we'll, we'll look at our options and um, yeah, we'll, we'll be reviewing, reviewing um, the recommendation uh, put forward by um, Douglas and Partners. So yeah, that's, that's where that project's at. Uh, Nindara, Darbrook Road, uh, the drainage works out there. Um, again, they're just continuing on. Um, also, again, with the expected date to be finished this, this financial year. Uh, at this stage, we're on track to do that. Morella Street Causeway. Just, just one thing on that uh, MR358. Um, at this stage, there are still the, the, um, uh, the load limits, etc., etc. I guess people are and the concern, especially, um, is to um, um, get uh, some transport through there. It's a, it's a great access to, uh, to the northern part of the state. Um, after this report is, has, will come in, uh, is there any uh, um, chance of getting just a single lane or is it just, it has to, those particular uh, sections have to be totally redone? Oh. I don't have the answer to that. Um, we'll, we'll look at the, the report um, and the recommendations from that report. Uh, there might be opportunity there to um, you know, lift, lift the load limits, but um, yeah, right. yeah, okay. can't say that until the, the report's... Uh, no, premature. That's, that's fine. Yep. Uh, it's an end road. So uh, Morella Street Causeway. I'm still waiting on um, a response from the funding body to see whether that variation has been accepted. Um, yeah, beyond that. Um, okay, we turn over then to finish on that. We turn over to page 19, works delivery Grant funded, etc. We can start off on that. We can move on. If anybody have any comments, or Sam, do you need to comment, or Nick, do um, you want to comment on any of those um, projected works? So if anyone's got any questions, we'll give an update. On page 21, reference six, Merrill Skate Park upgrade. Um, yep. How are we going with that? Uh, my understanding was that it was a, um, some of the, has the, um, public consultation gone out or not? Or we um, haven't got the, the plans ready to go out. I haven't seen them and I just no, wondered so whether I missed it. No, you haven't missed it. So the idea is that we've discussed it with some members of the Driver Reviver team. Uh, we've now got a meeting set up on Thursday with Rotary Club to discuss the skate bowl and make sure they're comfortable or got any feedback with us on how the uh, skate park of that project looks. Um, and then next week, the public consultation will happen with both parts, the driver reviver, toilet block, and the skate park. Um, so just wanted to make sure that I covered off all the user groups before going to the public um, and got their input before. And so that'll, yeah, so that, that'll happen and then it will happen fairly quick after that. Um, the time is that project we need to get moving on. So the idea is to keep it out for public consultation for a couple of weeks and just let people know what's going on and try and move that along. Um, otherwise, we are going to get a bit squeezed for time at the end of the grant process. Um, Nick, is the, uh, yes, so there is a time limit on the, the, the starting of that grant or the completion? The completion. So the Stronger Country Communities Round 2 
grant expires at the end of October 2020. Uh, and all the projects um, need to be complete, ideally, or substantially commenced. So we've got a we've got some pretty regular meetings at the moment about all of these projects, and we've got some variations in at the moment with most of them, either timing or changing the scope of works to fit the community's needs and fit the community the budgets that we've got for those projects. Um, so there's a bit to do in that space. Um, but we're, yeah, we're getting on top of some of the backlog in that space. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, just for you, number 10 there, the Emeru Park toilet facility, what's going on about the Splash Park? It seems to be going quiet. Um, so, well, it's, first of all, number 10 is about the toilet. We can say that yeah. that works um, yep. uh, all but complete. Uh, it's obviously locked up at the moment whilst the restrictions are on. Um, the Splash Park itself is under review and we've been liaising with the applicant for that project and also the funding body just to work out what the best um, way of delivering that, whether it's uh, and what modifications need to make to get the best outcome there. And once that's finalised, a report, that consultation has happened, a report will come back to council to give you an update before that project proceeds. So it's long to come back to council. Yeah. Yep, definitely. Um, yes, yes. Councillor Abbott. Thank you. Um, with respect to Jefferson Park, what exactly are we upgrading there? What's the facility? I think you have told me before, but what is what are we doing? Uh, so, what page are you on? What? Uh, page twenty. Thank you. Page twenty. Page. It's at the bottom. Uh, it's number five. Yeah, I'll just bring it up on the screen. So that is there's a toilet block between the bowling club and McKinnon Oval, which is an old timber toilet block that's past its useful life. And the idea is to replace that toilet block, but also move it closer to the skate park at, um, uh, towards the highway, so that we can provide toilet facilities for the, for the playground and skate park at Jefferson Park and the football club, because at the moment it's predominantly used by the football club. Um, and just update that infrastructure, basically. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comment um, or questions? Go back down to... Just, um, um, sorry, me. Yes, Councillor Rabbit. Thank you. Um, uh, it's me again. Um, in relation to Mooby Road, which has been re which has been graded and is absolutely fabulous. Um, but just in relation to the verge, will there be any plans to remediate the verge, which is still in its very sorry state? Thank you. Sam, did you want to respond to that? Um, <laughs> no. Nah, well. I guess um, I'm not, not too sure um, what what you hope to do there. Um, the the verge um, now that the road is back in a drivable condition, it would be hoped that they wouldn't be driving up there. So I guess uh, in time it'll recover and rejuvenate itself. Um, it, except for it's been really flattened like a road and because there's so much gravel on the bank it's actually became a road as you would have seen um, mm -hmm. so I was just wondering if we could plow that up a bit so you could give the plants a bit of a break so that they could actually come through um, the more sort of broken up soil so that they could it could regenerate. That, that's a possibility but I do know that um, Telstra and we've well, yeah mainly Telstra uh, runs along there uh, and that's why when the guys were out there, they didn't actually um, uh, dig too deep in that area. No, but they, um, so the machinery has knocked over their poles before when they have been, because have, I think it all started with whoever was doing the roadworks driving along that bank. But any, yes, uh, if, oh. if something could happen, that would be great. Yeah. Well, Thank we'll you. We'll revisit that right. section soon and we'll have another look at it all. Thank you. The road is great. Thank you. Okay, any further comments or questions? I'd just like to make, turn to page 25 and um, uh, the Forest Reserve Road and Flight Springs and Kilo Road. Look, this is the first time that that's been formed up in a proper way. And if I would have had time to take a photo, I'd be glad to share it with you. Um, a, uh, 
it has been very difficult, but we also have a problem there because we don't have much gravel, but so it's, the road is formed up with soil as well as gravel, but uh, it's, it's formed up in a proper way, which it, uh, it is really good. So it's uh, very pleasing to see that it's formed up in such a correct way, professional way. Okay, any further questions or comments? Then I'll give a mover and seconder, please. Move. Councillor Seconded. Seconded. Councillor Driscoll, I'll still say all those in favour. Those against, raise your hand. There being no one against, we'll move on. Thank you, it's been carried. Now, um, page uh, 26, special projects update. Alan Fletcher. Alan, you have the floor. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, working down the report, Scone Regional Selling Centre. Uh, it's all but finished. We've got to do a little bit of work to the auctioneer's box and a tiny bit of concreting work and some landscaping where a uh, supplier of plants while a nursery uh, had a failure in their, their um, supply of plants due to the drought. So we're chasing some additional plants, but they'll go in soon, hopefully. We've got local nursery chasing it for us. Uh, Old Court Theatre, uh, talking to the builder today, they expect to be finished by the end of the month. Um, we're just finalising all the finishes now. So they have new toilets, uh, revamped kitchens, uh, refloored and carpeted change rooms. Uh, the main hall has been, uh, floor has been polished. Um, and new seating arranged, uh, which is flexible. We, we can have it in a theatre style or move it quite quickly and easily. So uh, Alan, just a question on that. There's uh, available in the budget 1677, but there's quite a bit of uh, work that um, uh, is completed or not completed. I'm just wondering whether that's enough, enough funds in there to... Uh, to uh, the build, builder's yeah. costs are all committed, um, but yeah, it's very tight budget. Um, in fact, we're over budget and we have to sort of talk to the funding body about the scope and we've, we've got agreement there. So we're on, we're on budget, but yeah, very close to the wind. Okay, good, good, good project. Uh, Scan CBD revitalization. Uh, we're talking to Transport New South Wales today and we've organized some meetings for late in the month. Uh, they're getting their information together on the pavements in the main street. They've already given us the geotech information. Uh, they're doing information, uh, parent have reports or finalising reports on various options for the finishes and also costs for that. And uh, yeah, so they've promised to have that information to us next week sometime or we're meeting the week after to, to go through all that. So that's the big issues there. Um, we're also uh, recently, um, Councillor Burns sent some information about a potential grant, which we're looking at for some, it's not in this report, but uh, chasing some uh, additional money for some uh, quick uh, early wins, trying to get people back into open spaces safely. Uh, and our main street suits that. So we're looking at some uh, future uh, curbside dining options, uh, which will be going. Um, Councillor Rabbit, you, you have a question. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, is Transport for New South Wales the same as RMS? Have they had a name change? Yes, they have. Thank you. Continue, Alan, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we're just investigating that. So you'll be hearing some information back about that very quickly. Because uh, the grants are designed to be in by the 10th of June and approved very quickly in about oh, a few months. Um, but yeah, we need to have, well, firm up a direction we're going to go with the design and, and get stuck into it. Um, at the last meeting, members of the committee made it very clear that they would like to see work happening right now when it's very quiet and the work could be done. Uh, what they don't want is to go through this very quiet period, then have business pick up and then have um, 
major civil works disrupting their, their clientele again. So I'm very mindful of that. Okay, any further questions on that section? One thirty three Kelly Street. Um, we've had lots of heritage work done on this job. Uh, the DA was signed by the general manager yesterday and lodged. Uh, our planners have it at the moment, so they're doing their thing. Um, but yeah, we're trying to push that ahead. We're mindful too that people would like to see that happening very quickly too. Yes, indeed, we all agree. Uh, Amadale Brook, the, the Wagers have been engaged to start work and uh, there's been a lot of prep work done out there in terms of trees and access or alternate access. Um, so it's all starting to happen. Cameron's Bridge, there was a report to council about uh, naming and uh, where the bridge is going and uh, land issues about acquiring access or realignment of the road. Um, so there's work going on and uh, trying to facilitate making that council resolution to look at alternative naming options and uh, yeah, they're getting stuck into that as well. Alan, has there been any uh, resolution of the, the naming uh, or is that still under negotiation? We're still under negotiation looking at options with, with, with the adjoining owners. Okay, thank you. Scanning Regional Airport. Um, went to free tender reports, went to council at the last council meeting. Um, we also, uh, so council, well, I'm just telling you what everybody knows, I guess, that declined to accept those tenders when negotiating with those for those three items and that's that's commenced already. Um, we're also trying to get local businesses involved in, in that process too, particularly for the building. Um, and our economic development people are uh, gets, uh, arranging that um, additional independent financial review. So we're aiming to bring that back at before or just prior to the, uh, or about the same time as the tenders. Uh, there's a lot of electrical work going on at the moment too. So that's um, where you, you know, the design, getting Ausgrid approvals uh, to, to make all that happen. Ausgrid approvals uh, and that electrical work, you'd think it'd be simple, but it's one of the most time consuming issues in any project. So. It's, it seems to be progressing quite well. Um, last one is replace two fire damage independent living units, Liverpool Lodge Murundi. This is a new job for the special projects team. But um, so we're getting stuck into that. We've got a um, uh, few studies happening. We've got some plans being finalized. Um, we just need to get a, um, hazardous building materials assessment and a geotechnical assessment. They're both being arranged right now. And yeah, we'll aim to get a, a DA in and then get it built quick smart. And that's it. Okay, thank you, Alan. Uh, do we have any questions or comments on those, those uh, topics? If not, I'll uh, call for a uh, mover and a seconder, please. Move it. Okay, moved. Uh, Lorna seconded uh, Councillor Collison. Those in favour? Aye. Those against, raise your hand. Making no objection. Uh, it is, the resolution is carried. We turn over now to page 34, Capital Works Update. Nicholas, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, Mr. Chairman. Um, turn your attention to the um, spreadsheet of capital expenditure. So the current situation, um, well, the last screen doesn't quite give us all the information, but the, we're sitting with the actual works complete versus the year-to-date budget at 94%, which is good. Um, 
and we can just scroll through this. I'm not sure how well this will work on the Zoom, but I think everyone has a copy. Is that correct? No. Do you, do you, have you was a copy available on the uh, on the Google Drive, Lorna? Did you? Yeah, there was a copy on the Google Drive, but I didn't get a. They said they were going to send out some um, a paperwork one, but they didn't do it to me anyway. So. Uh, Councillor Bedgegood, did you, have you uh, had a look? All good, thank you. All right. Can people read what's on the screen there on your devices? Or is that too, do you want me to zoom it in further? Oh, sorry. Yep, got it. So, um, this first section is the completed or deferred projects. Did we want to have a look at that or we'll move past that to the in, uh, current projects? Uh, do, do we have any, any questions or comments on those first, um, first pages? Uh, we, 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 oh, yes, thank you, uh, uh, Wayne. So line item 165, uh, the Allen Bridge House, who were waiting for funding, $350,000. What was that for? So I'll just bring it up on the page. So 165, that is, so Jeff might be able to explain the work, but it's repair, it's work that needs to be uh, maintenance work, or well, it's more than maintenance, it's repair to the top cords and some of the uh, infrastructure on that bridge that we need to attend to if, uh, well, well, otherwise that bridge isn't going to be able to stay in operation. So we tried to put it again in this year's budget um, and we haven't got the funds, like we, our maintenance budget each year is 250,000 for bridges and this project by itself is worth 350,000 um, and we just haven't been successful in securing a grant to do that work. Um, we are looking at what level of heritage significance it is because it doesn't attract heritage funding at its current level. Uh, and Matt uh, Pringle was um, talking to our heritage advisor about whether we could review that status and whether we could change it to a more significant heritage item, which means we'd be uh, open to more funding. But we are going to need to do some more work. I think they're saying they're currently doing bridge assessments at the moment, and that report will tell us how quickly we need to move on this item. Is that right, Sam? Uh, yeah, towards the end of May, the bridge inspections will commence. Okay, well, this seems very, very uh, important that we get some, some uh, more funding for that. I would have thought that that Allen Bridge would have been very much um, in the heritage line and, and uh, they certainly would, uh, would come forward with funding. My understanding is it's more of a local, regional heritage. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's local significant, but there's only two left in the state. Yep. And we have received heritage funding in the past when we uh, replaced, uh, if you drive over that bridge half, it's actually always brand new. And the other half we're trying to get, uh, obviously we're trying to get funding here to, to uh, finish those works off. So more applications to go with the bridge funding. Okay, um, Wayne, you have a question? Yeah, I'm just wondering about the are you um, having to me? <laughs> I'm letting you all have your discussion. That's fine. A uh, couple of points. Look, as Jeff points out, it is one of two that's remaining. Um, so I, I don't understand the, the reference to not heritage enough. And I would have thought rather than talking to our heritage advisor about getting its listing upgraded, if that's the case, that the conversation we should be having is with Transport New South Wales, if they've taken on Junction Bridge yeah. and they're recognising bridges of significance, this one obviously is one of those and it, it does or it does not fall within their, um, their scope of works. In looking at those other bridges, I, I assume they've probably already looked at it and decided that it wasn't worthy. I'd be interested to know why. Uh, the second point is that... Um, my concern is that, that there's no time frame given to this $350,000 worth of maintenance work. I, I would like to see that. I'd like to know how long we think this bridge is going to last without that substantial amount of money. Uh, 
it's one thing to try and keep the bridge going. If we can't afford to do it, that's, that's fine. But that is a, a, um, an access point for that particular parcel of land that's trapped between the, the Hunter River and on the other side as well. So it's, it would be quite a significant impost on the locals that live there should that bridge be closed. So I think, um, well, I just like to see a little bit more concern about keeping the bridge viable. And then secondly, obviously talking to uh, Transport New South Wales about whether they are interested in it. They may not be now. The moment may have passed and they may not have the funding, but uh, we all know that it's a costly bridge and at some stage we're going to have to replace it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Can you comment? Oh, well, the other bridges that we're investigating we've just taken over, they're, they're truss bridges. This is a uh, suspension bridge. So as I said, there's only the two left in the state. So um, we certainly we will need to visit that, revisit the funding we had in the past yep. and um, see so if we can get the deck fixed up. Well, I mean, I like it's only the deck. It's always the deck that it comes loose, it rattles, it shakes in the hills. So, for years we've been trying to replace the deck with those. <laughs> so it makes it a lot more stable. Um, that's something that needs to be just finalised. Okay, look, uh, I'd like to, to, to be from this committee that we, you know, we, we um, uh, write a letter to, um, to Transport New South Wales and uh, that uh, pointing out that, it that, that it's only the two of those in the state and that we would like them um, to, um, uh, if that's the appropriate body, I mean, we don't seem to be doing very well with heritage, and maybe with, with Transport New South Wales, uh, that, that we can uh, obtain funding and, and preserve the bridge. I, I've, I've, especially if there's only two in the state, I think it's, it, it brings its, its uh, significance much higher. I'm happy to investigate that for you and either write a letter or have another look at the heritage, but we'll bring some more information back to the next uh, committee meeting. I think that'd be really good. Uh, Steve, thank you. Just in regards to that, we have raised that with um, Transport New South Wales when they, were, when they were here in regards to Allen Bridge. I, I, I didn't realise it was, and they didn't sort of seem to infer that there was only two of those bridges left. They sort of inferred that there were more bridges left than the Junction Bridge being a truss bridge. There are a few of those in the state and they're more interested in that because I also did talk about potentially getting some of that money um, from Junction Bridge if that was allocated to council, whether that could be sort of allocated to assist with Allen Bridge as well. So that was at our meeting, but I did raise that with uh, Michael Papadopoulos and Vicky, I forget the last name, but I'll follow that up further too with Nick in regards to trying to uh, secure funding. But they were definitely more um, supportive of the Junction Bridge rather than Allen Bridge. But they said, and as I said, before they said there were more of those. I didn't realise until you said that, Jeff. But they indicated to me that there were a lot more of those um, Allen type bridges around the state than the Junction Bridge type construction. Yeah. No, the, the, there, was, there was a better example uh, example of Cameron's Bridge in the state. So that there was no there was no other better example than the Junction's Bridge of Bertrus. There was a better example of Cameron's. That's why they wouldn't take that on. And uh, as far as I know, the, the I haven't looked at the suspension bridges yet, but there is only two in the state, I know that. So, but that yeah. Okay. So, you're right. right, the recommendation of our Marvellous House and Campbell that um, we pull back to the committee meeting. Well, yeah, look, I, so that'll be very good. Nick, you've taken note of that. Thank you. Uh, I think we, we need to progress that as, as uh, strongly as we can, especially that there are only two in the state. Any further comment on, on that matter? Uh, yes, yeah. Councillor Abbott. Thank you. Um, looking at numbers 146 and 148 on page four, um, the disabled steps for Scone and Merriwar pools, what will, hap what will we do now with, in relation to that? Will they still be done? Uh, no, they won't be done. So that's subject to grant funding and the, uh, we haven't been able to secure a grant for the, that infrastructure. So there's no money for us to do it because that's very important that we get those steps done. No, there's no other funding available at this stage. So at this stage, they've still got the old um, swivel chair that they sit in and move into the pool and get lowered in, but they don't have the disabled steps. And will, would council, is that the sort of thing we might review now with the DPOP running, whether we actually spend money without grant funding on the steps ourselves? 
and you can talk, you can, you can suggest that through the DPOC process, definitely. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Um, any further questions on the, uh, on the, the first part of the, uh, this statement? Or if not, we'll turn over to page 8 of 13. Um, 1 to 55. Works in progress and uncompleted projects. Do we have any comments or questions on that page? If not, then we'll turn over to page nine, 56 to 106. Okay, nothing further on that. We'll turn over the page to 107 to 160, which is page 10 of 13. Um, on 150, uh, the White Park development, um, year-to-day electrical concept design for the site currently being prepared. Uh, how, um, have we got enough funds to do that? Uh, no. no. So we've completed the concept design um, for the upgrade for power. Um, the request now is to proceed to a detailed design to make it shovel ready. That body of work would be $60,000 worth of design work, um, which we currently don't have funding to do that design work. So all that money in there is grant funding um, and it's not approved. So at this stage, we can't proceed with the detailed design unless we find $60,000 from somewhere else in that project. Um, and the, um, that's a critical part to making the power a shovel ready grant project. Which is very important to have ready to go when a grant comes up. Any further questions on that page? If not, uh, yes. 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 So, um, number six, 166, the Upper Hunter Swimming Pool Shade Sales. Um, so, we've got the go ahead with that. So, that's complete. So, the shade sales were installed last year. That's just the end of the money that's available for that project. So it was part of the Stronger Country Communities Fund, which is that money, plus the drought communities program money from last financial year. And that's just the last little bit of money that we're cleaning up the work with. So you see the big shade sale at the, um, over the sh concrete area at the, sub at the deep end of the Skane swimming pool. There's one there and one at the Merry War pool, and that was the work we completed. So the money that's left over, um, so we can't use that for the disabled steps? Uh, no, so there's some more work that needs to happen at the Scone Pool to finish off that project, a bit of fencing and a bit of work to the concrete, which will complete that scope of works. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, turn over the page to page 12, 211 to 260. Do we have any concerns there? I've asked a question, 212 bus shelter projects to be identified. I thought we had identified them, but they're not funded. Is there anything further to report on those? Uh, well, that's correct. So they've been identified. So there's four projects that we've identified. They're just subject, still waiting for the grant. Have you heard anything, Jeff? No. So are we okay. still waiting on that response. All right, anything further on that page? We'll turn over to page 13, 261 to 288, final page. No further comment on that. On that um, ISC 5.4, we have a mover and a seconder, please. Second it. Second it, Councillor. Fiscal can move by Councillor Collison. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. It's against. Aye. Raise your hand. Okay. Um, turn over to page 40. Um, ISC 5.5. Nick. I think you have to fill in here. We haven't got Chris. Yep. 
So Thank you. Between Phil and I, we'll answer the questions in this one. So this project, obviously, Scandamara and I pipeline, we are in that last 5%, so we're doing that commissioning phase still. Um, we've had all sorts of um, challenges or hurdles through the commissioning and testing phase, which is why you do it. Uh, we've had problems with pumps, we've had problems with programming with the, um, the telemetry so that we can get all the different sites talking to each other. Um, biggest hurdle has been some pumps at Scone, which I believe should have been addressed over the last week. Um, I won't bore you with the detail of what went wrong, but they, they should be fixed now. And our contractors are due back in town after their shutdown period uh, on Wednesday, which is tomorrow, and we should be full steam ahead with the commissioning. Um, we're still on track with the fact that the project's due for completion um, in the end of June. Um, so before then, we're planning to have something, ha um, have it all finished. We're talking um, with the state government about um, openings, what that would look like in the current circumstances. Um, and then moving forward, we're getting pretty excited of this project is connected with the um, Murundai Reservoir project and also the three villages. So. The team's ramping up more in that space as well now, whilst we still have the commissioning to finish. Um, there's not all the infrastructure's in, it's just a matter of making it work. So, did you want to add anything to that, Phil? No? All good. Sorry, for the Yeah, no, that, I think that about covers it. Yeah. Any questions? Without being any questions, yes. it's, it's, a, it's yes, a lot sir. of the. Sorry, the mayor's got Oh, thank you, the mayor. You have the you have the floor. Thank you. So, um, obviously, last week I went on radio early in the week, Monday morning, and said that we'd be probably having water go through mid May, and unfortunately got the news about the pump failure from Nick and Phil. So, thank you for that and uh, went on radio the very next day saying that it was probably going to be pushed back now till the end of May. Um, you know, given, given no subsequent issues, where are we at now? I'm, I'm back on the radio again in the morning, guys. I'm very conscious now that uh, the ABC, I'm going to have to update it again because that's what they're, they're asking me. What uh, sort of a, what sort of a opening no, so I, don't, I shouldn't use the word opening. What um, what sort of a date do you think there will be water flowing through to the residents of Morundi? Bill, did you want to answer that? Or did... um, I suppose you can answer that. I, I think it, it, the critical um, part at the moment, I, I, assuming that the pump issues have been resolved, is commissioning of that uh, chlorine dosing plant. So we yeah. can't send water through to the reservoir until that's commissioned and functional. Um, I'm not sure of an actual date on that. Do you, Nick? Uh, no, but the, uh, look, the, the information we have at the moment from, our, from last week was the end of May was still plausible, providing nothing else is, is um, going to rear its head as a problem. But I might just talk to you before you go on radio um, and just give you a final update on that. I'll just check, check back with Chris and see if he's got any other information to add and just yeah. give you as much information as we can before you get on there. We, we may actually have a further update tomorrow morning, uh, Wayne, when Lee are back on site. All right. It's probably going to be after my uh, 7, 10 a.m. <laughs> interview, but... All right, I was just trying to preempt it. But, um, that's, that's, right. fine. that's enough information, so thank you. Okay. Um, any further questions or comments? Okay, I'll ask for a mover and a seconder, please. IC 5.5. Move it. I'll second it. I'm the chair. Those in favour, aye. Those against, raise your hand. Resolution is carried. I'd like to turn over to page 45. 
um, ISC 5.6. Philip, you have the floor. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, there's a few changes to this report this month, so I'll, I'll make sure I cover them appropriately. Um, we're just talking about the pipeline, so obviously we still want to move Murundi to level two, same as going in Aberdeen as soon as we can. Um, that will obviously, we'll have to have that pipeline working, even if it's just working in a manual process, we just want to be able to move that water through and then we'll have that conversation about potentially reducing them down because uh, the supply from Boyd Street is still quite good at the moment. So we do have that um, that slight backup, but Boyd Street on its own, it's too high risk to reduce it ahead of that pipeline being finished. Um, so just a bit of an update here on terms of our uh, water allocations and licenses, and this is sort of in reference to the attachment that's at the end of this report. Um, so the, the outlook is still for the next water year for general security to be uh, very low or zero. That may change and that'll be reviewed sort of right up until the end of this water year or financial year. Um, if we get a, a, a lot of winter rain, they may give some allocation, but it's still looking to be very low or zero general security. Um, part of the water sharing plan as it is now is that if general security is zero, then high security will be a maximum of 75%. Um, but to clarify, we have a special purpose license, so that doesn't apply to us. As a local water utility, our allocation heading into the next water year will still be 100% um, for our 2000 meg that we have from Glendorm Dam. Um, but that's just something that you read that in that attachment. So before um, uh, you get panicked, we'll still have our water for our purpose, but other high security users will probably have that restriction as well. That's what it's looking like at the moment. Um, I probably read this report out of order because I wrote that at the end, but anyway, we'll talk about consumption. Um, it's all looking very, very good is, is the moral of the story. We've had favorable changes to weather patterns. Uh, we've been on level two, um, you know, potentially that's also had an, input, uh, an impact. People are uh, having those changes to their behaviors, how they're using water, but uh, we're seeing decreases again for the month. So, this month this year compared to this month last year. The last four months, basically all of this year has been significantly lower than the year before. Uh, and we're now year to date trending almost 14% less uh, than what we were last year, which is all very, very good. Um, particularly as, as, as I said, the next water year, we're, we're not gonna be able to fall back on that general security uh, that we have in the last two years when our consumption is very high. Um, you can sort of see how all the townships are responding. They're all fairly consistent. There's still a slight aberration which with Castlers, which could be for a number of reasons, but it's such a small supply. It could be a single main break would be enough to throw that out. Um, yeah, then we get to the water outlook, which I sort of talked at the start, but this is where I've written it in the body of the report. Um, and you can look through that attachment I've got at the end. That's a public document that um, the state government releases each month um, to tell you how things are trending in each of the um, water sharing plan areas. Um, so that's a probably, ah, uh, and we've also put the application through to extend our um, special purpose license. So our local water utility license. So. That application is with NRA. Um, that's essentially based on what our demand estimates are. And I've used the numbers from our draft IWCM, uh, but they're the best numbers that we have and they're numbers that Public Works have put together for us. So um, they'll hold a lot of weight when that assessment is undertaken by NRA and that assessment is done with input from uh, DPIE, so Department of Planning industry and environment um, and it should be a relatively administrative process um, because it's a regulated dam we don't have to do a detailed yield analysis or anything like that 
if we were commissioning a, a, a new bore or a new unregulated water source. So it should be just a matter of demonstrating this is what our demand is going to be now when we connect Murundi um, and the villages um, in the near future. Any questions on any of that? No, what a difference rain makes though. Yes. <laughs> it changes yes, things a lot, but yeah, I think, uh, and I think also the fact that, that uh, people are more aware of things now, of water, the importance of water. Uh, and so I guess everyone has changed their water habits uh, quite considerably. But anyway, it's, it's good and uh, good report. Thank you. Mover and second for ISC 5.6, please. I'll move from the chair. Seconder, please. I'll, I'll move it. Second. Seconded. Thank you, Lorna. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, raise your hand. Thank you. Uh, we'd like to turn over to uh, page 56, um, ISC 5.7. Philip, we're hearing lots from you this afternoon. Good yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I apologise for the wordiness of this report. I couldn't really find a way. There's a lot of information there and I um, couldn't find a way to make it any more succinct than what it is. Um, so I trust that you've, you've sort of read through that so I don't have to read it out word for word. Um, essentially, this is a, a more detailed update on what happened, why it happened, um, and what we're doing post that event to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, as you're probably more or less aware, our supply comes from Glenbourne Dam via a pipeline. Our only treatment is uh, chlorination at the moment. Um, we also have that existing um, supply source from the pump station at Aberdeen, and that's also uh, only chlorination as a treatment. Um, but it also has an infiltration gallery, so it gets some moderate filtration that sort of happens there. Um, there's a flow chart that sort of shows how the system works. Um, not the easiest to follow, but it's the best that we have. Uh, okay, so as we go through the history. Is, can we uh, bring a good drinking water? That's the, the end result. Yeah, sorry, what was that, Ron? Uh, I guess the important part is the, uh, the good drinking water. That's what we're trying to achieve. Yeah, absolutely. We have a drink of water. Um, so in terms of that, historically, the supplies that we have are very, very good, um, which is sort of the, it's, it's a double-edged sword in a lot of ways. Um, so when everything's working right, the, the source is good enough that we don't need a more complicated uh, treatment uh, process to make sure that that water is safe to drink. It's a very, very good water source um, from both Aberdeen Pump Station and Glenbourne Dam. Um, we, there's a lot of words there. So what happened though is obviously we've been going through this drought period, the level in Dam, Glenbourne Dam has been falling steadily. Um, when the weather patterns sort of changed at the start of this year, we had that period of heavy rain in February and that's sort of what started that initial um, algae event in the dam itself. Um, and there's still ongoing issues in, in the dam even now. There's algae in the dam now. They changed off take on us uh, yesterday. We're on Aberdeen pump station right now as of today. So the algae issues are still there even despite you know, the cooler weather. Um, but essentially what happened with that algae event, when they switched to the low off take, that starts uh, introducing that more turbid water into our system. And so from the moment that happened on the 26th of February, it was sort of, uh, eventually we were going to reach that critical point, which is what happened to us. Um, Tubidity itself is not necessarily anything harmful. It's just an indicator um, that there could be something harmful and it's also a barrier to effective chlorination. So essentially, if you've got the turbidity that's too high, you can't guarantee that that chlorination has been effective and that's sort of the, the crux of the problem. Um, so that's the system as it is now. So the summary of the event, 
So as I said, one in South Wales, they changed that offtake um, level. Um, we started getting those higher turbidity readings um, coming through the system. We did the best we could to keep that to acceptable values, which is more or less less than five. Um, but that's just an aesthetic limit in the drinking water guidelines. We don't have a critical control limit for turbidity with our system as it is now because we don't have a filtration process. It's not used as a, as a critical limit. Um, so essentially it's just this guideline value for um, overall water quality and risk, which is a more, it's not as black and white as I'm sure everyone would sort of want it to be. Um, we got through to about the 13th of March. We had two, so we do daily turbidity um, samples and testing in the reticulation. So you had, we had two consecutive high results. Um, this is where we contacted health to basically say, look, this is the state of our network. Um, we want some advice. Um, we sent that through to them in the morning. They got back to us that afternoon where they had obviously had those discussions internally themselves. Um, and their advice was that we had to issue the broad war alert uh, to make sure that we could ensure the, the safety of the water supply. They weren't confident that at that level, the chlorination could be relied on uh, for proper disinfection. Uh, we had the board war alert, so we had, as you'd be aware of, of that uh, event. Uh, Water in South Wales switched back to the high level offtake on the 18th of March. So that's when Glenbourne Dam became available to us again. Um, and that's also roughly the same time that we were able to lift that alert because we've got that turbidity under control via supply from uh, Aberdeen pump station. Uh, so that's what happened. So the review of the event. So we had a, a debrief session with New South Wales Health to go through the event and to come up with a plan of attack moving forward. Um, so the identified issues that we have, this is pretty much the critical stuff. Um, our backup groundwater supply that we normally have in Scone from the wells was not available. That hasn't been available um, for the last two years, more or less, due to the drought. So my only backup supply was from Aberdeen pump station. Um, that pump station has a limited capacity and a limited reliability. Um, it doesn't have the capacity to keep up with the peak summer demand as it is now. Um, we're overly reliant on that water quality in Glenbourne Dam to be good most of the time and consistently good, um, which is, a big problem. We're also over reliant on the testing and the operational procedures of Water New South Wales. We sort of, we more or less are passively waiting for them to tell us, hey, there's a problem, this is happening. We, we, we don't have a lot of carriage over that. Um, you know, the samples where they test for algae is not necessarily um, the water that's coming in the pipeline because the offtake is not where they're taking the sample from, um, so that's quite different. Um, and also, the reason for them to changing those offtakes, by the time we were getting the issues with the turbidity from the low offtake, that algae had subsided to a point that they could have switched back. But they don't do that until they have two consecutive results. They only take samples once per week. So we had this period of time where potentially that could have been switched back but we don't have control over the operations of that dam. Um, so that's an issue. Uh, so we pretty much know that the water taken from low level offtake is too turbid to use for a long period of time. So when they switch off takes, essentially the dam becomes unusable, unusable very quickly to us. Uh, we don't have specific procedures relating to algae or turbidity within our current drinking water management plan. Um, and we don't have suitable treatment barriers to deal with either of those two things. Um, so our actions moving forward. So the first thing that we've done is put on an online turbidity analyzer at the dam. 
Uh, this is to make sure that we don't allow any water into our system at all that's going to be unsuitable to use. So that's in place now already. Um, we are getting support from New South Wales Health to develop a cyanobacteria management and response plan. So basically a response plan specifically for algae. Um, this will include additional water sampling and testing in response to algae events. So at the moment there's algae in the dam, so that'll detail when it's at this level, we take testing here, we do it this often, this is what we're testing for. That'll be all detailed out and that will basically update, that'll form part of our drinking water management plan. Uh, so the next point, we'll also review and update that plan and we'll include uh, turbidity uh, targets and what we're going to do at different levels. So that'll be documented out. Uh, and, and essentially pre-approved by uh, the regulators, DPI and Health. Um, so we're proceeding with our UV disinfection and pre-chlorination treatment improvements, um, which will obviously help. It's definitely a help. Um, but just a note on that, that that will reduce the water quality risk in more terms of uh, normal operation, they're not a barrier to a high turbid event or a significant algae event either. So we will proceed with that. Um, we're getting performance specs done. We've got a proposal from a number of consultants to get the performance spec done, get the tender out on that. But that's not the magic bullet to all of the issues. Um, we're assessing and undertaking improvements to the existing pump station because this is essentially becoming a critical asset to us. Um, and that's happening right now. We've requested um, proposals, uh, again, from a number of consultants with a high urgency. And that'll be the number one thing to assess that, work out what we need to do, what it's gonna cost and to do it as soon as we can. Uh, we'll keep working with Health and DPI, so they're very much across this issue. Um, in terms of uh, updating our overall uh, quality and risk assessment for our supply system. Um, this is what we're going to need to do for us to be eligible for any further funding um, via the Safe and Skilled Water Program. So the ultimate uh, goal will be to have a water treatment plant, have, a, have some filtration barrier is how I see it. The only way that we can do that is to work with them to quantify the risk as it is now. And obviously this event, um, everything that's happened and documented here will inform that. Um, and that'll be our pathway to get some funding to have a permanent um, solution to the problem. Uh, and the last stop point, we will follow immediately on from the scoping study that Hunter H2O have done. I mentioned earlier that they're doing a site layout for a potential a future water treatment plant. And we will we will continue that process. We're not going to wait. Um, we will start to develop the concept design for that full treatment plant without delay. Um, All right. Thank you. That, that is certainly, <laughs> this is where you're in complete understanding of all of those matters, but I guess we're all looking for good drinking water. That's the, that's the whole uh, basis of it, but thank you. Anybody else have further uh, comments or questions of Phil on that matter? Again, I apologise, it's very dense, but <laughs> there's nothing you could really cut out. <laughs> uh, well done, Phil, well done, thank you. Okay, I have a mover and a seconder, please. Move it. Okay, move, Councillor Collison, second, Councillor Driscoll. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, raise your hand. There'll be no dissent. It, it has passed, the resolution has passed. Turn out page 63, IC 5.8. Um, response for, for um, councillor questions. Committee receive and note the report. Um, everybody happy with their, their answers to the questions? Thank you, Mr Chair. Nick, the rural residents have made the mailbox box. Read the bridges. Uh, if, have, if it hasn't been sent out, it's on its way. It's on its way. Thank you. Second one, the vegetation on Hunter Road. Thank you, very good self. The third one, is Sam still there? Yep. Sam, the satisfactory condition of the two Stewartsbrook culverts. What's satisfactory? Uh, how many years? 
Oh, I don't know exactly years, um, but um, there wasn't um, too many glaring issues with the, the defect report. Thank you. Do we have any, uh, everyone else uh, happy with their, uh, their, their, their answers to their questions? Okay. Um, that will uh, bring us then to the end. We note those um, answers to those questions. Uh, to councillor questions, do we have any councillor questions? Councillor Abbott. Thank you. Um, I have a few. So I'm just um, curious, how are concerned members of the community going to engage with the external review in relation to the independent review for the airport project? And what, is the, what will be the process for engagement? Then my second question is in um, relation to the negotiations due to the decline tenders, who are running the negotiations? I was just wondering about that. Um, and I wonder whoever it is who is running them, what delegations of authority will they have? Also, my next question is, are the libraries open yet? Um, I, I don't know if, any, if these questions can be answered now or if you will take them on notice. But um, yes, I'm just curious right. about- Look, we, We've got through up to three now. Um, Steve, would you like to answer some of the first couple or someone yes, else? Yes, I will. Yes, I, will. Um, I might start from the library. The libraries aren't open yet, but we're trying to work on that process of click and collect and they're just finalising the process, the risk management for that, so. Why, why haven't they opened yet? I'd have to refer that to Matt Pringle. Um, they're working on that process. I'm not sure um, what the hold up is, but uh, we're definitely working on that process and the aim is to open up a click and collect. Right. So, okay, so definitely the process is to open that up. And obviously in the near future, hopefully we have the libraries open full, full time. But um, the click and collect, I expect that to happen very shortly. I'll get Matt Pringle to provide an update on that to you. Thank you. Councillors. Um, in, rela in relation to the airport, so we've, um, with the consultants, there's a number of, we're, we're getting the um, consultants uh, responses to, uh, by the end of this week. Okay, in regards to the um, their responses to uh, preparing a brief, there's six companies being um, engaged in that particular process. I've been invited to provide that. Um, the review will be undertaken by whoever is appointed. They will do what they need to do to um, undertake the work to fulfil the brief. So they'll look at all the relevant information, um, and it'll be up to them to do that to determine to make sure that they complete the brief. So will there, through you, Mr. Chair, will there be opportunities for the community to be involved in that process when the reviewers are doing their review? When they do their review, they'll be seeking whatever information is required of them. Uh, we won't be interfering with that at all. And they'll, they'll do what they're required to do. So if, depending on what, they, what they're after, they'll seek that information. So we, um, council obviously appoints the, um, the people, the external reviewer, the independent external reviewer. So do, does council then say that there, you know, some of the community may like an opportunity to be involved? The, the, they'd be provided with copies of submissions that have been received and then they'd basically go through a process of working out what they needed to undertake their review. Thank you. To, um, council, um, Bedgood, please, you have a question, a comment? Yeah, I, I'm slightly confused. I thought we were asked for an independent audit review. Yeah, that's yeah. Does, does independent not mean independent? The moment the council suggests that we go to someone for information, it's not independent. The moment that the independent reviewer seeks external opinion on, on what's going on, instead of assessing the audit, it's not independent. So I'm really, really confused about this question and where it's coming from and why. No, I just, I, I'm asking the question. I was just curious when the independent reviewer does do their review, do, will, is it normal? I mean, I haven't done this before, but is it sometimes the case where people in the community may have an opportunity to, to voice their concerns? That was just a question. Thank you for answering it. Um, in relation to who is handling the negotiations, um, do we do we know who's handling? We, 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 we're talking about the tender. On, look, I think that question of the, we, we've, the council has decided to have an independent uh, review. I think that we have got to keep out of it, and so is, and so is the the uh, community at this stage. The and then the, 
the uh, I remember the resolution was that the it will then be made public. So I think we've just got to leave it at that. We we should just keep keep back out and let them fulfil their brief, then come back to us. Okay. Um, Through you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, just in regards to the last question, the tender process that is being run by. Um, Public Works Advisory. We have councillors engaged them to do that body of work. So they are continuing on with that work um, as a result of the resolution of the last council meeting. Uh, is that, is that, um, I am just remember that they helped us with the, the tenders in the first place, didn't they? They, councillors engaged them to oversee that process, yes. And that was, that's the whole process. That's the initial part and this part as well. So that's okay for them to help us with the negotiations for the decline tenders? Yes, that's the standard process, yes. And um, then, uh, okay, thank you. And my next question I've asked about the libraries. And I just wanted to know in relation to Authors Street, the street behind Wingen Street, um, what's happening there, because um, whether there's been any, I actually, I have sent an email in relation to the state of it, which apparently it hasn't had any attention for some time. Um, I'd, have to, I'd have to ask Mr. Javier to make a response to that. Yeah, that, that's been um, your yeah. So we'll take that one on notice. I'm not across where that request is up to. Thank uh, you. Well, and thank you. And also, um, the Bruce Roberts Thompson signage has that been corrected? Because as I um, mentioned before, the sign it was incorrectly spelt. His name was incorrectly spelt, and a family member had come by and they were quite distressed by that. So I was again. I was wondering whether the Bruce Roberts Thompson sign has been corrected. I think it's outside a canteen, a new canteen. Yeah, I'll follow yeah. that one up as well. That's the one down at Bilro Sports Complex. Yes, okay. yes. And, um, and just in relation to, uh, to the disabled steps at the swimming pools, I am really concerned that we rely on these sorts of things, this sort of infrastructure being done on grant funding. I think the disabled steps are really important and that there should be other, we should actually be allocating funds. So my question is, um, can, is it a bit risky the way we rely on grant funding? And is there any way we can add certainty to these projects being done by actually having money allocated to them outside the grant process? Thank you. Definitely understand where you're coming from. Definitely appreciate the question. I would love a big bucket of money to allocate to all the projects. We don't have that much money to allocate. Um, but you're more open to suggestions of what projects you'd like to propose to get um, deferred to prioritise things that are subject to grant funding. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, Councillor Bedgwood. So I'd just like to support Councillor Abbott and her last um, request there with the disabled steps. Further to that, and I probably should have asked it earlier, the, and you did answer it in part, Nick. You said that the, the seating is still there that uh, is used to get disabled people into the water. Is that adequate in place of the steps currently? So are we currently compliant? And, and the second part is, it's, um, you know, if we're not and the steps are needed or are necessary, I would, be, I would ask the question why we relate pardon me, relying on, on grant funding as opposed to just making it a, a budgetary requirement. Yep. So currently we've got old infrastructure, which is the, uh, the seat system. It was compliant to my knowledge when it was installed. If you look at the current best practice, the steps are the preferred option. Um, the, we can review the budgets, that's fine. We, as staff, we've put up requests to allocate funding for the steps in two separate grant projects to council. Both times, they haven't been set as a high priority. So we're, um, as I said, I'm more than happy to revisit it, but this is something that's been kicking around for a while, trying to get the right funding for it. Um, I can definitely go away and look at what projects we may need to move to make it a council project, if that's the sort of direction council would go, or we can revisit grant funding again. Um, I just just further to that, uh, Nick. Uh, do we have any any cost? There has been a number of costings that were around from anything from fifteen to twenty five thousand. Is that for the two or is it just for one? Do we have any idea of, of um, what the actual costing would, 
we needed to put a, a set of steps. I think there's one set in Marunga at the present time. There's one set. That's fine, there. and that's been successful, which is really good. Um, and so what will it cost to put the, the steps, uh, stable steps in Scone and Maryville? The budget that we were shooting for was $15,000 per pool, so it's a total of $30,000. Well, maybe we should look at that then and, and put that up in, um, not only for grant funding, but also um, in the depot to see whether, and put that up and see where it comes out. That's sort of the only way we can yep. do that. Support that. Okay, any further questions? Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Nick, Jefferson Park, we're talking about relocating those toilets. The speed humps that were put from the highway around to the bowling club, I said they'll be taken out, taken out. Why were they taking that number one? Can they be put back in number two? So between the highway and the bowling block? Yeah, and beyond. There used to be speed humps there, and the rumour was that too many cars were bottling and out. But I know the golf club the other day had big concerns. Now with that play park, skate park, and toilets, I think we should look at putting them back in. I'm not, not aware of why it was taken out, but I definitely revisit about it. And if, it's a, if there's a road safety issue there, we can look at reinstalling it. Yeah. Okay, do we have, do you have any other questions? No, thank you. Um, Councillor Driscoll, do you have any questions? No, I'm right, thanks. Look, I just have one, and that is the, the, um, the, uh, the lights over Vinegar Street on the roadway at Maryville. Look, I know we've, we've talked to, uh, I think it's Osgrid, uh, they seem to be most difficult with it, et cetera. Can we, can we just revisit that, keep it on the Certainly. radar because they're, they really are something that's re required. It's pretty dark there. Yep. And uh, look, if we could just try and, and pursue that even further. Anything else that we we need to bring up? If not, I'll declare the meeting closed. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you for your detailed reports too, especially Phil. Um, and uh, we thank you anyway. I close the meeting. Thank you. See everyone. Are we off here, Nick? No. Nope. Mm -hmm.